know, it's like when you go into these like really character voices and you do a, a dialect, you're you're not sure, and like you have to ask, who is this? Sometimes, yeah. and or you, or you forget to ask, and so you really honestly don't know sometimes who you're with. Um, um, question. Um, 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 gorgeous black headdress. Yes. Um, you guys kind of touched on this a little bit, but what are um, the uh, voice warm-ups that you usually routinely do, and how do they differ between characters? <laughs> <laughs> do that. Uh, mine's really easy. I can share it with you because it's on my iPhone. Did um, you record yourself? No, I have, I have an app like called it. Vocal Warm-Up. And it's awesome because you can put the notes that you want to start and end on. You can put what kind of, of, uh, of warm-up you want to do. If you want to do lip trills, if you want to do scales, if you want to do whatever. So it, it lets you adjust the, uh, the notes and it lets you adjust the, the tempo, everything. So for different characters, if I know I'm doing a higher pitch character, I'll just slide everything up. And if I know it's a low voice, I'll slide everything down. So, vocal warm-up app. Nice. For me, I like to, um, I, this is crazy, I like to lay on the floor and stretch like my body. I think this, like warming up my body is as, Im is as important as warming up my voice because it's, it's all connected. Um, um, but literally, I will, I will hum a lot. I hum a lot because it's just a very kind of light, delicate way to get your chords kind of warm and going. And I'll do that after a session too, so you're warming down as well. Um, and I will do the kind of like the ba 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 ba, and like really open my mouth, get my articulators working. Um, uh, and then I do a lot of the ha ha ha, ha ha ha, ha ha. ha. I kind of do a lot of that. Yeah, <laughs> all, all of that. Yeah, all of that. And then I also uh, for CL, especially when we first started, um, I was learning the dialect, and so I would. Uh, Every morning before I would go into my session, I would watch Jane Austen films nice. and just repeat oh, all nice. of those lines that I heard. <laughs> and singing, and you sing like you're a singer. I'm not really a singer, but I still love to sing. I don't care. Um, <laughs> like in the car on the way to Funimation, oh, yeah. so if a great song comes on, I think singing is a great way to just warm up the chords. So, yeah. your turn. Uh, uh, ooh, right here with the pretty gray and the. The home stuff. Home stuff. I didn't hear horns. All I saw was. Um, I was wondering what uh, character have you had like, the most fun with? None of them do not have fun. <laughs> 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 <That was good. laughs> oh, Tamama. Definitely Tamama. Tamama and Georgie and Shin Chan are probably the most fun. I get to play a lot of really ridiculous, awesome characters. Like Mae Rin and tripping over herself and doing ridiculousness. Maya Yaya and Princess Jellyfish. Oh, yeah. And I'll have this as Michiko and get, get to be like sassy and. I mean, like, there, I, I really can't pick one. I would say, like, out of what we're doing right now, um, on, with the broadcast stuff and stuff, I'm really enjoying Ginko and Yurikuma Arashi because she's very animalistic and. Wow, wow, she's got I love it. It's fun. Uh, um, I think one of my. Um, Gosh, one that I've had really a lot of fun on most recently is a video game. Actually, it was uh, Agent Athena in Borderlands, the pre sequel. Getting going in to do that because she just, I mean, she's unapologetic and she's, you know, she's toting guns. And it was, I could, you know, I could have gone to a rave all night long and walked in and still nailed that voice because she was so kind of lower register. So that was um, that was a whole lot of fun. But the other thing is that I, I have, I have found by looking back over my my voiceover career, that I, I typically tend to do kind of the same sorts of voices, so it's all in this kind of lower, slightly lower register. I don't get to go really high very often. I can, but that's Monica's job. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't get to do that as often as I would like to. Um, but this yeah. broadcast stuff, stuff, you probably will. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's <laughs> entirely, entirely true. Entirely true. Well, I kind of did in, oh, what was the show? Um, 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 she was a vampire. Uh, she had black eyes. She had long blonde hair, big boobs. It'll come to me. It'll come to me. Doesn't okay. narrow it down. <laughs> I know it doesn't. It doesn't. It'll come to me. I'll just look it up. Vampire with big boobs. <laughs> Dang it. Cheeky. Cheeky. Thank you. Yes. That was a lot of fun. The boob kind of stuff. He's got his priorities straight. <laughs> uh, my turn. Oh. Uh, 
the, uh, the one way in the back with the glasses that you're looking around and pointing at yourself. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, no. yes, sure. Why not? Sure, you do. Okay. Oh, you Thanks both so. have glasses. Yeah. How about red shirt star and then blue shirt? How about you both stand up? Okay. Perfect. Awesome. <laughs> you first, and then you. Is that work? Yeah. Okay. Does that work? Does that work? Um, Is that work? Is that work? He's what? He's yeah, what? He's what? <laughs> he's what? <laughs> I have like kind of like multi-part question. Um, do you think that um, there's enough diversity in the voices uh, for female characters on anime? Like, do you find that the directors a lot of times will ask for a character to sound like another character that you've done before or things like that? Um, so, uh, is that something that you think uh, is just because there's not enough of you doing the job right now? Or do you think um, it's it's just that the audience kind of wants to hear the same voices? I think it's more about, uh, he's talking basically about typecasting and that kind of thing, where you yeah. just play the same role over and over again. I don't think it's necessarily that they're doing it on purpose or like they think that fandom wants to hear that voice again. It's more about, um, here's this really cute five-year-old character. Am I going to force Lydia to go out of her comfort zone to play said little character? Right. I'm going to call Monica in, you can do it in an hour. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. exactly. Same thing with Brina. Like, I need a young boy character. And um, am I going to try to force Monica to sound like a boy when Brina could do it in her sleep? Yeah. <laughs> and so, I do. <laughs> so sometimes it's more about that than it is. It's about getting things. We have schedules. We have time limits. We have things we got to get done. Yeah. Other times it's because they see a character and they think that's got to be Lydia or that's got to be Rena. So. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. So I know that in Japan, it would be kind of crazy for fans and people to do I've gotten death threats. <laughs> yeah. No way. Yeah. Uh, there was also a girl on MySpace. She wrote me on MySpace. And this was like not that long ago, like maybe four years ago. Um, and it was about Black Butler. And she and like I had just I was trying to look for old pictures, so I like somehow remembered my MySpace password, and I was like, I think I put that on MySpace. And so I go on MySpace, and there's like six like messages from this girl who she was just like, you ruined CL and blah, like you're such an idiot and like if I ever see you in person I'm gonna punch you in the face and like whatever. And so, uh, and then she kept writing me and she's like, oh, oh, you're not gonna respond now? Like and she did that like so many times and so I wrote her back and I was like, oh, hey, I don't check my space, um, but I see that you're very upset. Um, I, uh, you clearly have a lot of passion about this stuff, so I feel like you should funnel your en energy into creativity and like try maybe like, you know, getting into acting or maybe, like try to figure out how to do directing or, write, or writing or like create your own stuff. And that way, like, if you become super successful, you can one day meet me and tell me to F off. <laughs> And then she, was, uh, she may have written me back. I don't know. I never checked my space again. So. <laughs> I got, there was one girl way back when I first started, and uh, I worked on a show called Noir. My character maybe said like five words the whole series because she wasn't a big talker. But this young lady was like, Monica Real should be taking out shots for what she did to Karika. And I'm like, what, the five times I spoke? <laughs>
I knew I'd ask a good question. Um, so, we all work for Climation. I know that uh, Monica also does some things for Sentai. Do either of the other two do, do anything for other studios? Part one. Part two, given that we're seeing a bit of a resurgence in some of the studio driven American companies like Anaplex and US actually actively doing more of them, their own uh, releases. Pony Canyon being over. Uh, Discotech doing some things with some of the older pieces out in Florida of all places. Are you guys seeing a, a, a change in the industry? Obviously we know that Funimation is busy, busy, and busier. But what do you see in the rest of the industry? Constantly growing. Yeah, it's constantly growing. I um, I also uh, and I think you folks as well work for Overtron Five Thousand. Right. Um, and and, um, and there are different studios around Dallas that aren't really anime. I mean, Funimation <coughs> is pretty much the only game in town. And Overtron does its own thing, and they do a lot more uh, video gaming and stuff. But um, but I mean, we also work in in uh, the voiceover market beyond anime and video games. So. You know, we might have political ads or radio spots, or we might be a commercial or something. So, um, but it's but it's definitely across the board, lo locally uh, growing. I have seen it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does that answer your question? I think sure. it's neat. I mean, that's neat. general. But what do you guys see in the way of the you know, anime industry specifically? I I think it's neat that because I was around when it all went boom, boom, and then came back like a phoenix. <laughs> um, it's really exciting to me. Now, granted, I'm always scared. I'm that tentative person that's like, please keep buying your anime, please keep watching anime, please keep going to go ahead, please, oh my god, please. Because uh, I've seen what happens when it's pan crash, so I love all these new initiatives to do like broadcast notes and simulcasts. And all yeah, that. I think Funimation is really smart, like as far as the way that they're doing it with all the simul dubs and all that. Like, I, I think they've done a really good job of utilizing the internet to their advantage instead of being just being like, well, just don't download it. You know what I mean? Like, that's just not going to work. Like, the internet's not going away. It's right. kind of a staple. So, like, I, I think Funimation has been really, really smart in the way that they've been utilizing it. Oh, golly. Um, um, um. Wait, I'm trying to do it. Yeah, you. That's an answer to you. Yeah, there you go. Yes, live long and prosper, my friend. Yeah. Um, so, all of you have done a wide variety of different shows. Um, some of them have been more, say, fan service oriented. Um, how do you approach those types of shows that are in the industry? I didn't understand the, 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 the second or the middle part of your question. What kind of like fan service? Oh, fan like service. I'm sorry. I understand that. <laughs> uh, I uh, try to avoid them nowadays. Like, I just don't know them. <laughs> Uh, it, well, it's tricky because sometimes you'll do a show and you won't, or this is in my case anyway, um, I don't think I can talk about it yet, but I'll, I'll give you a, an idea of, of what happens. So you get cast, you do the show, and then OVAs start happening, and you have no control over what's in the OVA. And you've already spent how many hours and hours yeah. and hours voicing this character, so you can't just go, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to do that. I think I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, I think you and I are in that together. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, so there's there's that, and that uh, that kind of stinks just a little bit, only because then we have again it, it's losing control over over your content to some degree. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it, sometimes it can't be helped. Sometimes there's no way to know that that's about to happen. <laughs> and when it does come down the pipe or whatever, it's just you just kind of gotta grin and bear it, and just I just roll my eyes a lot and just go, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I don't mind a good sense of a show if it's got a plot. You know, I yeah, like Negative was really fun. Negative was cute. I think Shuffle was great. Uh, you know, I love Compione. Like, there are shows that I like that have that paranormal aspect to them. But, and I'm not going to name them because some of them, I'm sure they're your favorite shows, but there are some shows that I think should be birthed. <laughs> I'm like, this is, there's no storyline here. This is solely to see who is. It's porn. <laughs> it's porn. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, though. Just, you know. <laughs> Just, if that's your thing, that's great, but we don't. <laughs>
Yeah. You get paid a lot more. Yeah. yeah. Like, way more. So true. Yeah. Um, I think uh, you have to do less, actually, I have found in, uh, in, in video games. So for instance, let's say there's uh, a lot that you have to say. So in video games, they, they trust the actor, they trust their casting process enough to say, okay, so give it to me two times, or give it to me three times. And you do it three times and you move on to the next one. Um, and you're not as concerned with matching laps um, in, in video gaming. Um, whereas, you know, in Funimation or, or just any of these anime shows, you may have to do one, one chunk of lines or one paragraph, you know, many, many, many times. So it starts to become a little, little tiring vocally. So that would be, I think, so yeah, money and less time. <laughs> well, you, you're more free. In anime, you're given a character that already has a personality, a look, you know, uh, if they're hyper, if they're, if they're um, kind of Eeyore-ish, if they're depressed, if they're, you know, you have all of these things already built for you, and then you have those dreaded lip flaps. Whereas a lot of times for video games, they'll be like, here's a picture of your character. Go! Off you go. Yeah. 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 Which is awesome because you don't normally have that freedom with a lot of the anime stuff. Like, there's not a whole lot of room to make up your own characterization. True. We have five minutes. Great. Uh, um, 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 oh, now you guys want to ask questions. <laughs> uh, uh, whoever stands up first gets it. Uh, you right here. Yes. That's a great question, and I'm gonna I'm gonna start by saying uh, this goes off of Eric what you were talking about last night. Education, 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 education. So, yes, so continue. Huh? The one in the middle. The one in the middle. It's all education, guys. It's all education. We got five minutes. Come on. So, I'm going to say, I would say, uh, continue your education. Practice reading things out loud. Taking chances, taking a risk. If something comes down the pike to audition for it, whether it's theater, whether it's voiceover, whether it's a student-directed film, whatever it is, start that process because work begets work. And the more you do, the more people start to hear about you and they go, oh, gosh, she's really great. So but all of that starts with not only a high school education, but some form of college or, or community college or vocational training or something. So, so please, please, please keep going down that path. It's useful and important. And on that note, I think that was perfect because they're saying, wrap it up. Yeah. <laughs> but I think that was perfect. Yes, I totally agree 100%. So yeah, but but read things out loud, and also know. And I say this to everybody. I say this. I I, I, I teach theater um, in in Fort Worth, and I say this to my theater students. Um, be proud of the way you sound. Be proud of your own voice. Know that your voice. Every single person in this room has has one voice, and it's unique to the world. So don't be afraid of what it sounds like, and don't be afraid to share it with other people. So I would say that. Yeah. yeah. yeah.